Hey everybody, this is Greg Benz with a demonstration of the new Blendif Luminosity Masking in Lumenzio version 3.0, which is a free upgrade for all existing customers, and it's actually the 11th major free upgrade since Lumenzio originally launched. Now this is also the most ambitious update to Lumenzio yet, so while I'm excited to put out a few videos showing it, I can't possibly detail all the features that are coming in the new version, so please take a look at the release notes to see everything that comes with the new panel. In this video, I want to cover my absolute favorite new feature, and that is the blend if luminosity masking that is available throughout the panel. But before I show you, show you that new feature, let me explain why we might need it. So in this image, I want to take this background sky and darken it down a bit and bring back some more color for some mood. To do that, I could create a light three mask and put it on a curve and then just simply click on the curve and bring that down a bit. And we can see that we've very quickly added a lot of mood and changed that sky in a very nice clean way. It's very separated from the foreground rock and trees, it's separated from these mountains, and just overall has a nice improvement to the image. But if we look carefully, there's a couple of workflow limitations with what we've just done. First, the document just grew from 124 megabytes to 165. So it got 41 megabytes larger with a single layer mask. That's inherent to layer mask, but unfortunately it does create a lot of file bloat when you start working with multiple layers. The other challenge, if we look at this layer mask, notice that I have dust spots here, 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 and elsewhere in the sky. If I didn't figure that out until after I'd created the luminosity mask, I'm presented with kind of a tough challenge. Do I wanna go back and retouch the underlying layer and then recreate or adjust all the layer masks above, or, do I want to clone on a layer above all these layers and lose the ability to work non-destructively with everything beneath it? Neither is a great choice. So with the traditional luminosity mask on a layer mask, I have increased my file size and I have a static mask that adds work if I need to change the current or the underlying layers. So let's take a look at how Blendif can help solve those problems. So I'm gonna delete that mask and we'll just keep working with this same curve. At the top of the new Lumenzio panel, you'll notice these modal buttons. If I click a couple times, we'll see if under, meaning that all these buttons that just turned blue are gonna work with the blend if mode looking at the underlying layers. So if I click on L3, I get a blend if lights three, which is exactly the same as the light three mask we created previously, but as a blend if. We can see before and after. So we have the exact same adjustment in the image, but the document has not grown a single byte. It's the exact same document size. And because it's a blend if, there's no static layer mask. Any changes we make on the underlying layers are automatically gonna come through. So it's a much nicer workflow in that regard. Now, if I wanted to go back and make pixel specific adjustments in the mask, I'd still need to work with the mask. I can't quite do that here but I still have the flexibility to target this more locally. So for example, if I wanted to target just a certain portion of the sky, I could use the lasso tool and throw a group mask on top of my blend if. Now notice with the group mask, it's only increased from 124 to 134 megabytes. It would have been the same increase if I made a refinement with the layer mask, but because this is just a much simpler mask than a luminosity mask, the data compresses much better. So we are adding a little bit of file size if we start using this localization, but that would have occurred pretty much anyway with a pixel mask. And now we have this much more flexible result targeted to a particular part of the image, and it's completely dynamic. If we make changes to the underlying data, they will all flow through automatically. So a very nice workflow for us. One question you might have in looking at this is, well, how do I see exactly where this is being applied? So I'm gonna undo this. And if you think back to the previews, if we look at just a regular luminosity mask in Lumenzia, we have previews, we can see what the mask is gonna look like. And once we add it to a layer, we see the actual mask. Whereas with these blend ifs, we don't see any real preview. So it seems like it might be kind of tough to visualize. And that's why I've created this new if button in the panel simply click on it and this green color shows you exactly where the blend if is being applied. And I can see in real time what different masking options would do to my image. So for example, 
dark six are going to adjust these areas in the shadow of the rock. And I could zip through the different zone masks. I can even use the range picker and zone pickers. So for example, click in this area of the sky, hit OK, and I've automatically selected that part of the sky. So incredibly powerful tool to create and visualize across pretty much all parts of Lumenzia with the exception of vibrance, saturation, and the, the plus minus mask, but everything else, including the uh, zone and range picker tools are available as blend if. So very, very powerful new tool. I'm excited to see what you might do with it. Please visit gregbensphotography.com slash Lumenzia to learn more.